Today is still Friday, February 16, 2024, and I'm start opening the engine. All right, I just open the drain plug there to drain as much as possible oil. I'm coming here, I'm removing the brackets, and then I realize that I block, <laughs> I block here, I block the oil feed, I, I block this one, this for the deep stick, and I didn't saw that. <laughs> yeah, okay, never mind. In any case, continue opening the engine. All good till now. I don't see any glitter on the oil. Looks okay. I already checked the clearance between the lob and the bucket over there, and it's all over the place. It changed completely than before. <laughs> and here, I remember something. I remember that I don't have the tool to cut the oil filter. The good thing is that you don't see glitter, you don't see any signing pieces. That's a good one, I guess. Right? Yeah, I need to order also the tool to cut the filter, the, the metallic filters. Now, the most filters are carton and they're not like that. That's a good thing, good tool to have, right? Let's move on. Three minutes break. Uh, when I make the leak down test, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking why I didn't lit up a cigarette and show you the smoke that comes out. <laughs> and now somebody comment. In any case, here. Comes up south, studs out. All right, comes out here. All right studs are here I'm removing the sensors because I'm gonna put the cylinder head sideways I don't want to hurt any sensor the buckets pockets in order here inside all right classic the rest of the parts here you saw it earlier now let's pull out the cylinder head and now it makes sense why the cylinder number six, it was working, was running colder than the rest of the cylinders. I just pulled out the cylinder head. I didn't move even the head gasket, all right? What's this? Cylinder number one, two, three, four, five, and then we are going to the number six. What's the firing? This is supposed to be round and not like that. And what's the head gasket here? Let me take it out. All right, not a big deal. Not a big deal. So that means this happened the first time, the first race, not the last one. Yeah, the valves, I remember the valves. Some of them are in, some of them are out. Whoever must in the seat, most probably he was blind. Yay. It get pushed outwards. So you all around only here. Take a look. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, not a big deal. Not a big deal. It's okay. Pistons are okay. There are some marks from ethanol all around, some little bit corrosion. I'm gonna do something in this this time. I'm not gonna put it like that. Most probably the number six was running much more hot than the other. It had much more pressures. It has a good alignment. Yep. Yep. 
it just shifted. You can see the lines, you see the lines where it was and where it went. It was here and then it shifted here. Oh boy, and it was running. I put a bet this happened on the first race, not the, the last one. That's what I believe. All well, the rest looks fine. Obviously the valves need to be lapped. Okay, moving on, moving on. I want to search for the cylinder, how, the piston how it's going to be. Let's have a look. Just wipe out the surface here. It doesn't look bad. Obviously, just taking, uh, just watching it, all right? What do we have here? This is a crack. This is a crack. It might continue down. That's how this looks like. Oh boy. Yeah, lovely. All right. Let me take it out to make it upside down to drain the the oil and the coolant and then bring it in to open pieces of gonahels. Alright, alright. Curious to see the piston rings. <laughs> Outside of the engine room, oil pan out. I don't see anything on the oil pickup tube. So far, looking good, looking promising. Okay, here's the oil pan. We have some glitter inside. Hey. Oh boy. Now it makes four or five pulls. I don't know how many pulls make in total, to be honest. It's supposed to be four or five pulls. Let me continue taking it apart. If I see something, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna make again video. Otherwise, I'm gonna take it inside the engine room, removing piece connect rods. Back inside of the engine room. I remove the oil pump. Currently, I haven't washed nothing, eh? It's just, I'm opening. Oil pump, oil pan. Here, oil pickup tube, the frame, the rear seal, the cylinder head you saw it earlier, all right? Time to remove piece connecting nodes and the crankshaft, all right? Then, I was thinking, since, since there are valves that are leaking here, why to bother with this cylinder head and to don't use this cylinder head over there? This is much better than the other one, and the camshafts are much better than the others. I'll gonna ask the owner, I'll gonna ask my friend, I might use this in the head instead of this. If no need lapping, if the valve was okay, it was not leaking, I'm gonna use that one. But now, why opening the valves, lapping the valves, and then again, one sits more in, one more out, make no sense, right? 
In any case, let's continue. All the, the, the big deal is here, down. I wish to have the camera and the laptop to go live, you know, but I took it back home because in, in two weeks we have to move from here, I've said that before. In this case, we're going to be nice to have the camera to be live, you know, to show you. Crankshaft journal looks beautiful. The lower bearing looks okay. I don't see any problem. Okay, there is one small line, but that's nothing. It's beautiful, all right? For the power that makes the car, you're going to tell me, okay, he made a couple of runs. He didn't make one full season. I'm happy to see a journal like this, and I'm happy to see the bearing at this condition. Let me take out the piston. It's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. If I put the phone here, it's going to overheat the stupid phone. Yeah, okay, that, that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to spend a bit more time, but one at a time, yeah, screw it. I'm going to show you one at a time. Or, put no, putting it down, I'm going to show you all together at the end. Yeah, yeah. All piece connectors are out. The journal for the connecting rods are excellent. I don't see any problem whatsoever. Now, the lower bearings of the connectors are excellent. The upper, from the other hand, it's a different story. What's the other one? That's number one. Number two. Three. Four. Five. And six. Six a little bit less, most probably, because what happened to the head gasket, it happened the first time. That's what I believe. And it was not making, that's why the, the temperature it was lower by 100 degrees on the number six cylinder. That's what I believe. Now, this, I believe that has to do with the connecting rod. It's not pre ignition detonations. I believe that it's the material of the connecting rod that's changing the shape with the temperatures and the pressures. But that's what I believe, that, that's me, all right? Now, crankshaft. Crankshaft, it spins beautiful and I can make 360, it doesn't stack anywhere, that's a good one. Let's open also the crankshaft. Connecting of bearings need to be replaced, but it can happen again the same thing on the upper one. Especially now that I'm going to change the piston rings, I'm going to remove the glazing from the cylinders, that's for sure. Yay, lovely. Crankshaft out, crankshaft bearing caps, and the main bearings. Let's have a look on it. That's the upper one. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, all right? The number four, you see one polishing mark here. On the front. All right. All the rest, it's the same as when I, when I installed it at the beginning, all right? Only the number four, you see some. And then, number one till seven, all right? Number one. You see a polishing here. Number two, it's nice. Number three, you see one line there. Number four, it looks nice. Five, polished. Six, polished. Seven, excellent. Now, one thing that I don't like, it's the rear thrust washer. This is, like I said, when you press the clutch, you're pressing against the, the crankshaft, you're pressing against these two thrust washers. Okay, there is a well here at this point, a little bit here at this point, and here. One, two, three. The front one, it's nice and clean, like when I install it. It doesn't have any problem. Now, there is another thing. What I believe for this application, if it didn't have billet aluminum connecting rods, and it was a billet steel connecting rods, it's been, okay, it's going to be completely different. The harmonics, it's not going to be... Why I'm saying that? Why I'm saying that? You have billet aluminum connecting rods that are light, okay? The, the crankshaft, by the way, the crankshaft looks beautiful. The journals looks excellent. No need even polishing. It's, it's okay. It's beautiful, all right? Now, what I'm trying to say, I'm trying to say that you have one crankshaft that nobody balances it. This crankshaft is being balanced for the stock connecting rods. It's a... 
stock crankshaft. It's not a it's not a crankshaft that's been balanced with a billet connecting rods. Okay, billet aluminium connecting rods. That's what I'm talking about. So one stock, two JZ crank. All right. You have one very good damper pulley, ATI, if I remember right. Yes, it is. Fine. And then you have a flywheel and clutch. You get my my point? You, you see where, where I'm ending up? It, you have a stock crank and you have this clutch and the flywheel, the ATI damper pulley, and you have light aluminum aluminum connecting rods. What I believe that this for the upper one, even if I put again new after he he make five six runs. I have to ask, but I think that he didn't make more than six runs. Every six runs, you're gonna end up to be like this: the upper connecting bearings. I can make it more tight. The clearance we can get. I don't want to touch the journals or the connecting rods. I don't want to touch them. I was thinking to make it more tight, the clearance, but mm, yeah, it's just the aluminum connecting rods are a little bit more flexible, a little bit. Yeah, okay. Never mind. Let's make the block upside up. I'm gonna remove the main bearings, the upper one. I'm gonna remove also the cooling sets at the same time. Then I'm gonna make it upside up. Once again, it didn't stay for one year, obviously, but I don't see garbage inside. That's a good sign, at least. All right. Removing the cooling sets, removing also the bearings, and then making it upside up and finalize the video. Let's finish the video. Ends in upside up. I have to send it for one light resurface, the deck. Just to remove any imperfection to don't have any headache later on, especially for this. You don't feel something, but there are some small imperfections. It will gonna be nice and welcome to be okay. Then. Then we have a problem here, but after that we have to change the pistons. We have to put an oversized pistons. But by the way, by the way, if somebody said on the comment down that you know what, ah, this smoke it was a coolant. No, it was not a coolant. It was the oil catch scan that was filled up with oil, and that's why it was smoking the car back. Okay, I hope that I make myself clear. He didn't have any problem with the coolant, the the engine, the car. Now. My problem with the cylinders, like I said before, the, even if I put a new piston in, it will gonna seal at the beginning, but then it's not gonna seal. Most probably not gonna seal yeah, even from the beginning, but I'm saying. Let's see here. You see, you see the cross hats all around, it's nice. Here you have a little bit vertical lines, all right? And you have a little bit here. That's the number two. Decent, not bad. Here you have these vertical lines. All right, that's the number three. And yeah, okay, it's not the ideal to seal the piston ring. It's acceptable, you're gonna tell me, yes, acceptable, wait one minute till I finish. All right, that's how this looks like here. <clears throat> All right, there, you will gonna have some blow by with that. Some people they're gonna think, ah, you know what? Well, it's fine. It's fine if you run, let us say, 15 psi of boost. You know, if you run 30 psi of boost. But think about to, go, to run 60 psi of boost, to run four bar of boost, okay, and to rev up to 9,000 RPMs. You see where's the difference? It's like the people when they're burning the piston rings. They said that, you know what, I'm driving the car normal, and it's okay, fine, but as soon as I'm pushing and it comes and it's building up <coughs> boost, the car starts smoking. That's exactly why. So, this will gonna be acceptable if you was running 15 PSI of boost, you're not gonna have any blow-by. You're gonna be fine, because of the pressures and the temperatures inside of the, of the combustion sample. But not for this application, that's, that's my point, all right? Let's go to the number five. That's the number five. The corrosion, what you see, the marks. This is from the ethanol. Okay. 
as hard as it looks like from here. And then let's go to the number six. Number six, nice, decent, the number six. But if you come here, at this point, at this point, you might have even a crack. <laughs> this one, you can feel it. It has a step here. Here, I'm not going to seal any piston ring. I mean, see how that looks like? That's why I said at the beginning that, you know what? Let's fix the cranks up down because the cranks up, it was like potato chips. It was like this, the journals, on the, not on this crank shaft, on the previous crank shaft. If you watched the previous video, you'll understand. It was all over the place. When you put the plastic gates here or when you measure it, you get different measurements on the same journal. It was all over the place. You measure it here, here, and here, different. You measure it here, here, and here, it's different. I mean, I'm talking about here and here, outer and inner. Now, the crankshaft, it's beautiful. I don't see any problem. I, I give you my theory about the connector bearings. Even if we put again new one, you're going to have the same thing. That's what I believe. And for the block, I'm going to like to send it to the machine shop. All right. I don't want to make it half millimeter greater, the cylinder, because this type of uh, gasket that we are using here, it's going to have less material here. It's going to be half millimeter less. You're going to tell me, yeah, you might get away with that. Yeah, but it's not good to oversize. You can apply more boost on the smaller piston, you know. It's well known. Years now, it's not something new. That's the thing. And like I said, if you see also down there, you have some rust from ethanol in all of the cylinders, not only on the number six. The number six is the worst. Here it's the worst. This to clean up this one, you have to oversize half millimeter the the bore, the cylinder. And that, like I said, that's why we give one injection, you know. Fix the crank, put, let us say, this cylinder head, because the other one has a crack seat, valve seat. And then let's finish this season, all right? And the next season, let's build it properly. Let's, let's build it correct. But, but, I hope to be ready until the next run. We'll see, we can find out. In any case, that's it. That's the end for this part. For any news, I'm going to make another video. Okay, thank you, over and out.